guys, what's up? I am back, and unlike usual, this is going to be a different kind of video. It's going to be over 3D printing. So recently, I had to take my computer into a uh, repair shop because I broke the hinge on my laptop. So I just got my 3D printer a couple weeks ago, and my laptop was broke, so I thought I couldn't 3D print with it. However, I found a way around it. Um, after a lot of digging and trying to find solutions, I finally found something that I think works pretty well. So, um, I'll be basically explaining how to do it. So, I'll be explaining on how to use Shaper 3D, which is a 3D modeling program on the iPad. I'll be showing how to 3D print and slice from that, as well as how to um, basically download and slice from websites like Thingiverse. So first I'll start with Shaper 3D. So if you haven't used it yet, you basically start a sketch. You can do whatever you want. You can make a box if you want, and then you can extrude it. Um, I'll just be using this as an example for now. Um, as you saw, I do have a model that I was working on for something with work. Um, later, I will be referencing how to export, and that is where you're going to export. I know it's kind of weird with that arrow, but um, you'll be using that as the export. That's the only thing I think that doesn't really show what I click on. But um, yeah, so the program is actually really easy to use, really fun to use, and. Uh, it's a bit different if you're used to, like, Inventor and stuff. It's a lot more different considering you're using an Apple Pencil and you're using an iPad. But um, still really good for the iPad and being able to design on the go. With touring, it's going to help a ton. So I can uh, 3D print or 3D model on the road, basically. So... Firstly, once you have your desired object, you're going to export and then you're going to click the 3D print option. You're going to click STL and then you're going to give it a name. I'll just call it video. And then basically you're going to begin to export. You're going to save to files. I have it in a my own little folder with the g codes and the stls if you want to do that that's great if not that's also great but we're just going to save it there and then we're going to go over to a website called astroprint so whenever you first go in it might look like this um if it does just go to design library upload files choose files and then you're going to go into your downloads or Wherever you saved it at, sorry. So 3D prints, previous STL prints. And uh, we're going to choose video. It's usually not that quick. Um, it's a really simple model, so it, it'll load up quick. But usually it might take a minute or two. Definitely not long. But you're going to click those three dots right there. And then go down to slice and click that. Um, when you first go into it, you might have to add your what 3d printer you're using um your material which i'm using pla and i feel like most people do and then you have these print qualities you have draft which i think is 0.2 normal which i think is 0.16 and best which is 0.12 uh, don't quote me on that i think that's how it is but you can also make your own basically profiles so if you are just going to use their settings, you have a support option and a plate adhesion option, and you also have a fill density option. If you want some more settings, you can click the advanced slicer settings, and this is where you can update your, um, like if you want to make it 0.16, you can update it there, which it doesn't like that I did that. Well, I guess we'll just do 0.2. That's just because it didn't register the period uh you have your shell settings your infill which you can do different shapes and which i i like because like cura and a couple others it still has the cubic subdivision which is what i usually use uh your material settings speed travel 
um, support, which is super nice. And then, um, just like the others, it has raft and brim, which I do use raft quite frequently. And yeah, so you can either press slice from here or you can press slice from their settings. I'm just going to use their settings for right now. You're just going to press slice. Now it's going to be, <laughs> again, it's not usually going to be that fast. It usually takes about 30 seconds to a minute, depending on how big the file is. Like when I, uh, that 3D model I showed you, it's a mic holder that took, um, that probably took like 45 seconds in order to do, but there's so much going on with it. But, um, from here you can press the three dots. And if you want to look at it before you print, you press preview before print. And that's going to load up. And there it is. I made it super small, apparently. Uh, it does give you the dimensions. But um, I, uh, I also didn't make any dimensions. Uh, I didn't look at the dimensions earlier. But yeah. So you can go through the different layers. I've been having a tough time trying to figure out how to make it do it without doing that. But yeah, so... We will, uh, I zoomed in too much because of how small it is, but yeah, so the print time would be seven minutes and yeah. So once you're done, uh, previewing it, making sure it's okay, you can go back, press those three dots again, and then you can go down to download and then just download it. Now, if you are printing off the iPad, you will need a dongle or, um, an adapter to take micro SD card, which I do have, and I'll provide a picture here. And yeah, so if you do have that, go ahead and hook that up, hook your uh, micro SD card up to it, and then you're just gonna drag and drop into the micro SD card. Um, I'm currently just using a, um, a flash drive for now, just for the video, but um, if it says zero, uh, kilobytes or I don't even, I don't even know. Um, all you have to do, like, you can just wait for it, maybe exit out for a little bit, do your own thing and then come back. I haven't had that problem recently. I did in the beginning, but now I don't really have that problem. So I don't know why it's doing it here, but that is how you get basically from shaper 3d into a slicer onto your micro sd so from here you can take your micro sd out put it in your printer go ahead prepare it and everything and you'll be up and running in no time but if you want to 3d print off of thingiverse you go to thingiverse which if you're new to 3d printing this is, has a bunch of different um, models and stuff but for the video i'm just going to be doing this little podium thing so just make sure to read the summary because it'll tell you like resolution and fill stuff like that if it needs supports or not instead of downloading all the files it'll, if you download all the files it'll put it in a zip and it just gets really annoying for me whenever it's in a zip so i just go to thing files and then download the ones i need or the ones i want that's also helps if it's like 24 different files but 24 different files but you only need like three you can download just those three so gonna go ahead and click download download it once it's done downloading go back to astro print and in the design library you're gonna upload files just like before whoops gonna go to download so this one will take a little bit longer just because of, like I said, there's a couple more things going on with it instead of just a rectangle. But see, it's still super quick. And then we're going to press those three dots again, go to slice. We will, I'll just go ahead and do my own settings for this one. Slice. Then we're just going to wait for it to slice. Sorry if you can hear the 3D printer. I'm currently printing a GoPro tripod. GoPro tripod for if I do 
disc golfing videos or stuff like that. So once you're here, click the three dots, go to download. Again, you can preview it, but I've already previewed it. So on the other one, so I'm just not going to do that. This one. So once it's in your downloads, again, you just drag and drop. And it's in there. So see the video one, it says uh, 101 kilobytes now. So it does just take it a second sometimes to do it. Another tidbit is you do have only one gigabyte of storage. As you can see, it's not really, it, these don't take up that much storage. But if you are worried about it or you do get to that point, all you have to do is press these three dots and then delete. And it just deletes them from the website. So once you refresh, as you can see, the storage goes back to zero. So this is just a really cool way. If you don't have a laptop or you're just in a pinch, you can use your iPad to still 3D print and get those prints out there. So like I said, you just take your micro SD card out from the iPad now, plug it into the 3D printer and then get to printing. So Thank you guys for watching. I really hope this helps. I know it helped me a lot because, like I said, I had to wait a week to replace my screen and my top cover because those ended up being broke along with the hinge. So I was able to still 3D print when I just got my 3D printer. I was still able to during that week. And I did learn a lot about different layers, different infill options how rafting works and such. So it is really nice seeing that this slicer program has those options. So yeah, if you have any questions, please just let me know. I'd be more than happy to answer them. And yeah, I'll catch you guys later.